Hey everybody, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andres Salazar. Today, I'm very excited to talk to you about Lobo. That's right, we're talking about Lobo. Not just Lobo, but Simon Beasley, Keith Giffen, Lobo. 1990, this miniseries, The Last Zarnian, was everything. This was the book. And today we're gonna to talk about Lobo, man. I'm a huge fan of these guys, and I'm excited to talk to you about some 1990s comics that I was super into back then. Um, first, before we even do any of that, I just want to say hope all you guys are doing safe during the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, it's a pandemic. It's kind of crazy out there, but I hope all you, your family and loved ones are doing well and you're safe and um, everyone's handling it, handling the stress and the pressure of it. Um, we're here in Ventura, California. Everything's okay right now, but uh, you know, we're kind of on a lockdown. Um, if you can find a silver lining amongst all this, uh, and it is a challenge, the one thing is being locked in. Uh, as a kid, when I lived in different places and I had to be locked in because of snow or whatever, I was sick or whatever, uh, I read books, I read comics. And so um, maybe it's a good time to catch up on some shows, read some books, things like that. So that might be kind of fun. I'm gonna try to do a little bit of that myself um, during this time. So right now we're gonna do a little memory dive into Lobo, DC Comics Lobo from 1990. Uh, let's go take a look. Thanks guys. Okay, everybody, let's do some Simon Beasley Lobo. Uh, this little fancy book is a book I had, I think it's the very first book I had bound. So uh, there was a company up in Omaha, uh, Nebraska, that does book binding, and they do comic books. And I don't remember how I got a hold of it, figured it out, but I am addicted to it. I do my own now. And so this one was a compilation of Keith Giffen stuff, because I'm a huge Keith Giffen mark. So he did Ambush Bug and Lobo. Um, he did both the, the, the writing and the um, art for Ambush Bug. Uh, and does like all, I have all the Ambush Bugs. And maybe we'll do some Ambush Bug episodes. You know, comment below, do you want me to do Ambush Bugs? Let me know. I love Ambush Bug. And then he also did Lobo. So I bound up Lobos and I, in here, in this book I have the first two minis and then I have this one. I have a couple of the, the one shots. Um, and I love these dumb things. And let's talk Lobo. Let's talk Simon Beasley, you know, because this stuff is some of my favorite comics, probably some of the most popular comics too, when we're talking about uh, the time period. You know, in the um, early 90s, Lobo was a beast. Whatever you think about Batman now, Lobo was that. You know, it was like crazy. Everyone loved Lobo. And a lot of it was the attitude, you know, which of course was a satire of Wolverine and all the crazy X-Men stuff and hyper-violent. So it was a satire which kind of like became so popular it became itself. And uh, the art, the art was just out of control. And it's about Simon Beasley. And uh, this stuff for me was groundbreaking because we hadn't seen much of this, this Brit here in the States. You know, Simon Beasley has done some work for um, 2000 AD and it's slain the horn God and all these other projects. But here in the States, it really was DC Lobo, which put him on the map and put him like, where we all saw. Um, as you see, I got signed by Simon and Keith Giffen. Both of them signed this. This was at Comic-Con years and years ago. Love this cover. This has been used a million times over and over because it's so damn iconic. Uh, and it's brilliant. He does do, he does a really fun like uh, paint with acrylics and airbrush and things. And um, I love his work. So let's just dive into the last, uh, Zarnian, um, Portrait of a Psychopath. Just wonderful. Okay, uh, we need to talk about the, um, the credits here. Keith 
does the plot and the breakdowns. Now what that means, and I actually talked to both of them about that, a little bit of confusion. Keith Giffen generally back in this time, because he was doing so many damn books, he was doing this, Ambush Bug, he was doing you know, Justice League America, Justice League Europe, Justice League International. I mean, he was doing like tons of books. He would do the plot. I don't know how detailed those plots were, but they were not dialogue scripted. They were just plotted out. But he would do breakdowns. Now, breakdowns means basically the page composition. He would break down the panels on the board. Now, I don't know if he used full-sized board. I don't know if he sent those breakdowns to the artist or if he just did thumbnails and you know, Xerox copied them. I don't know that part. That I would like to learn. But then when I talked to Simon Beasley about this project, he said that, yeah, Keith did the breakdowns, but I wouldn't go by it. I did my own stuff. Which, with him, I can kind of see that. Maybe not with all the artists that worked with Keith, but it sounded like Simon did his own thing regarding that. So I don't know how faithful the final product is to Giffen's page layouts, we'll call it, right? I don't know, but it is what it is, and it's a big penis right there. Um, the coloring's great. I still love the coloring by Laverne Kendrisky, Todd Klein, of course, lettering. Todd Klein letters everything. Alan Grant, though, is the script writer. Alan Grant and Keith Giffen worked a lot together on tons of DC stuff. So whenever you see Keith Giffen, Alan Grant probably did the words. Okay, so let's just talk about the story. It's basically we're getting introduced to to Lobo. Now at this time, Lobo basically got a complete like redesign. Uh, before in Legion, he was, um, he had this kind of a, a strange like s kind of a skin suit. His hair was different. And basically Simon said, I'm gonna make this guy look like the Misfits, right? So he's buddies with um, the Misfit guys, uh, Glenn Danzig and those type of guys. And so he basically made Lobo a punk rock, you know, Misfit type of guy. And I thought that was cool. I would love to see these in black and white as well because there's just so much going on. This was the first comic for me. Now I know that, you know, Bill Sienkiewicz was doing this years before before Beasley, but you know, using the spray, using all this texture, this kind of stuff for me was was new ground. Also, um just to know he's using I think just pin. There's no brush. He just goes in there with a freaking, you know, repeatograph probably at the time and just starts drawing this stuff. It works, dude, so well. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe he's using some brush, but I think a lot of it's just pen. Um, so, basically, the character, he is a bounty hunter. His big superpower is not only is he badass, but he can track somebody. So, once he gets, like, a job, he can track them, and he does not freaking quit. So, he gets this job by, um, by Vildrox. And uh, we're off to the race. Look at this design. I love these, like the motorcycle, all that kind of stuff, dude. I love it, man. I think it just looks so freaking cool. And you know, people dog on this paper. Like, I like this paper. Uh, I don't really care for the glossy stuff. I like this paper. Sure, the inks absorb a little more maybe, and the lines might not be super crisp, but I don't, I don't care. I like it better. That's my, that's my, now this might be actually, can we just do a paper test? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I think all these were done like on the same type of paper, so I can't really complain. Okay. Sorry, I was just wanting to see if the... Okay, I love this stuff. I just think it's really neat. I love the atmospheric again. Just the blending into darkness. Really cool effects, you know. Use a lot of cool marks and effects. I always like the Dutch angle stuff. This was something I was just learning from it, right? It's just like, oh, why, you know, he's, he's, it's all tilted, you know, everything is. And this is just a cool, like, design of characters. Really kind of neat. Marked for death, dude. Steven Seagal. I wasn't never a huge Steven Seagal guy. Um, I wasn't really huge on him, but I did think it was kind of cool using the keto and that kind of stuff. Um, 
One of the neat things I like about him, and you see that also in a lot of artists like Topi, you know, I would say he reminds me of Topi too. Where's my Topi? Let's just like look at some Topi with him right next to each other. And really what I'm talking about when I'm saying Topi is like the stuff where you have this like detailed next to uh, blank. So if you look at this Italian Topi artist, right? And we see, we look at some of his line work. Again, just like Beasley, he's using pen. And you'll see the high line work, a lot of uh, design and kind of like detail. And then it'll like space out with like some, some nice like blank you know, contrast work. And I can't see some particularly, but if you look at this for a while and you'll see the contrast with, yeah, I think it's in this, the rocks and stuff, I remember. Um, some of this stuff, I mean, this is much more rendered than Beasley, but I, I propose to you that stuff like this, this here, this stuff here, is similar to this stuff, okay? I'm just gonna propose that, that, um, and maybe you're just saying, well, that's just the principles of art, and, you know, and contrast, maybe. But I think there's some, there's some little influence there with Topi and Beasley. Or maybe it's just good art, you know? Maybe I'm stretching. Uh, but yeah, I like this stuff. Basically what I'm saying is I really like all the little tubing and all that kind of, and then you have these big blocks of no line, right? So there's this simplicity and then there's a lot of like hatchwork next to it. And so that makes it look more hatchy and that makes it look more blank. Again, this was all written as a satire, but it was so popular. I mean, this is a great, and the great shot. He did these really great um, sp splash pages. So what I thought was cool was just this line work here, just the squiggly, the kind of expressionist stuff. Again, kind of like a Sienkiewicz, which I hadn't seen before because I wasn't reading, you know, um, Moon Knight and things like that. And then I do like, again, it was this like background stuff. And you're like, what the hell is that about? Like, that's, it's not anything. There's nothing there. It's not, you know, supposed to read as an object. It's just some texture. Um, it works. It works with me. This is really cool too. This kind of like line stuff. Oh yeah, that's cute. Yeah, I, I read a lot. See, you'll see this here. This like very cartoony. He'll go into a, um, a kind of a cartoon and car cartoon mode, you know, when he does his work, which is kind of interesting because, you know, you'll see this very simplistic kind of cartoon next to like, you know, grizzled out textured muscles and things like that, which I think is a lot of fun. <clears throat> I remember, I remember just drawing this, drawing his like, his face and everything like that. Yeah. So he captures this old bag who's like his, his, uh, the person he's gotta, gotta take in. And I just love the violence and the kind of just the movements and, and stuff is really neat. This is great too. Just slamming people through the, through the walls and everything. And it's very blocky. I mean, he's just, it, it's not graceful. It's, it's very true to character, the movements and things. And some of this does feel like Giffen. Like that kind of feels like a Giffen kind of panel. Some of this could be, you know, like that, like that smile. Kind of a Joker-esque. Good lettering. And he did the paintings. Now you can see Beasley's work also in um, Doom Patrol. He did all those. He did a lot of those covers with Grant Morrison. Uh, so he does a lot of paintings. Uh, Slain the Horned God was a painted graphic novel, highly recommend it. There's others out there. So he did some painting work, uh, and then of course just this kind of pen work. 
And I should have bought some of this stuff when it was cheap years and years ago, but now forget about it. That's another great panel. I love some of these, man. I just, I remember drawing these. I remember this jacket and just the look of that. Again, it's dutched, it's angled out. It's got this in the foreground, this, this hand twitching, you know. Got this meat hook bloodied up. The spaceship. Got the effect, you know, the splatter. Toothbrush, you know, ink effect. He's got these weird dolphins. It's really cool stuff. So here's this the idea. They go to this concert. There's these chainsaw dancers there. You mean, it's just kind of just weird and wild. This is a really cool thing, too. Really neat effects. This is quick movement, which I thought was really neat. I, there's no way I could pull that off. I really like that a lot. In fact, that reminds me of a panel I've got in my book that maybe could use something like that. Yeah, hmm. I might try that. I would definitely hunt these down. You can find these probably in the quarter bins. You can also get the trade which I, I'm sure is not that much, but it's just a fun read. It's like light, you know, it's not heavy, but it's like the art, look at this. Again, really cool cartoon stuff, but with this kind of a grotesque, you know, noodling to it. Um, it's just really, really cool. I wanna actually read this again now, now that, I'm, now that I'm going through it and just really enjoying these. I love these splash panels, these big pages of Lobo. I mean, this was just cool, man. Oh, this is where we get these, like, these guys. They're on, like, a the spelling bee. They go to the spelling bee with this race of people who who are, like, hardcore, like, grammar guys. And it's just so good, dude. Oh, it's so fun. I mean, it's funny, too. So it's, there's a lot of humor in this. I mean, he and he gets questions like genocide. And so he can spell all the words that are, like, about you know, violence and destruction and things like that. It's just great. Um, it's funny, dude. That's a great panel. So, yeah, if you haven't read this again, I'm just going to say you got to read Lobo, The Last Zarnian. Um, yeah, I remember drawing that, too. Just this really fun, silly book that only Giffen could do that uh, is just, art-wise, it's just freaking brilliant. Look at that. It's just really good stuff. I mean, you can see Mobius in here. You can see all that European stuff, you know? But he's bringing it here to the States. All that stuff. Uh, yeah, that's another, maybe we'll do another episode of that too. But great stuff. Love Lobo, love Beasley, huge fan of Beasley back in the day. Uh, so, thanks for watching, you guys. You know, feel free to hit the subscribe button and all that. And uh, thanks a lot. Bye.